Hello everybody, and welcome to the Frosty Esports versus ESG Genesis Week 11 Saturday matchup. Joining me on the cast to see what might happen in this game is none other than... The Spider Queen. Hello everyone, how you guys doing? Doing pretty good. Ready to cast myself some League of Legends. How about you? Same here. Any prediction, uh, predictions on who you think's gonna win today? Well... I would say, based of how these two teams are playing, I'd give it over to Frosty. But suddenly, Frosty, you know, we, the team we very much praise for making no roster changes, suddenly have an ESOB, or in the jungle. So, this is going to be a completely uh, different Frosty possibly, and also navigate one of their newer players in the mid lane as well. Very, very true. Shy Quinn was one of the main reasons they won their last week match versus BMG, actually. So we'll see here. On he, has, he is on support, so... Could be quite interesting. See the Riven band coming out from ESG. And the Triss band, too. Trying to target one of the safer ADCs available right now. Mm -hmm. Definitely the case. And I want to point out some very interesting possibilities that could happen based off of the results of this match. Um, in the event where ESG Genesis pulls it out in week 11 and two zeros for Frosty, then nothing happens. But, um, and even where it's a one-to-one, -one, there's a three-way tie between DTS, Nevermore, and Frosty, where they all will have the same points and have already tied each other. And if Frosty 2-0, which I think is the likely result, then it's actually going to be uh, a DTS, Nevermore tie, uh, because they both tied during the week, and will also both be at 15 points, assuming Nevermore beats eight. Could be very spicy, as we see the J4 Cho bands coming out from Frosty here. Interesting bands. I haven't really seen Cho Gat too much recently, but eh, maybe they're targeting Fridge. The Sejuani first but coming out here. If anything, uh, Warhood and the, the side of Frosty could actually first pick Zyre and Rakan to get the strongest bot lane in the game right here. They definitely could, but will they do it? I'm not sure. Oh, Aurelia the Aurelia again. blind pick. Interesting choice. Could be a comfort pick for him. And the newcomer Warhood here. Let's see what he plays. If they're going oh, from top to yeah. bottom, which they are not, Shy Quinn. The Taric lock in. If anything, I think ESG here could pick up the Zyrocon. I actually think that combo is so strong right now. Z Zyra's the best ADC, like next to Caitlyn. Like, it's just, it's insane right now. You, it's by far the strongest. And it's not going to get picked up. The Alistar being hovered here. Hovered and... And, not ooh, in. Nautilus. Nautilus. I think that's a Nautilus support, actually. That's a really weird choice, especially versus the Taric. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Fridge Fridge with top. Ah, they, they didn't they didn't <laughs> think of the uh, pocket pick, the... No, and if that gets locked in, which I don't oh. think it will, two hookers instead, maybe, actually, yep, there it is. There we go. We, we're probably going to see a Nautilus top, actually. The Warwick hover from Frosty here. Warwick is one of the strongest strong this patch and super easy to play. Just he does so much damage right up until like mid late mid game, and then he sort of falls off. But instead, we actually get the Swain pick. I think Swain's probably the best mid laner in the game right now. It's super hard to kill, ton of damage, just a great pick all around. The Corky ban coming out. I haven't seen Corky too much recently, but I actually think he's a very undervalued pick. What about you, boys? I feel that Corky. Uh, I'd say he's kind of an undervalued pick. I get why teams don't pick him. Um, and he definitely has some potential, but I do think, just with other mid laners being there, he's definitely getting overshadowed. You don't have the Lucian Ban. Ooh, I wonder if they're target. Ooh, they must be targeting AD pool. Caitlyn oh, Ban are. coming AD out. Are getting tough. I think the Caitlyn Ban's great here. I think the best ADC available right now would be the Zaya. I think Varus is still good, especially with the current AP build that's going around. Ezreal always being a safe pick. I think Ezreal's great with Taric. We could actually see a Kaisa pick here. Kaisa being a fantastic ADC to line up with the Taric. Uh, Ooh, know. the yeah, Varus does come out. Better. I like the Varus pick. Hopefully, we'll see the AP build versus the three tanks of uh, ESG, and he just like two shots them. Same with the squishies. The Silver. And that's that I actually think they should have banned the Varus because it's been one of Frost's most comfortable champions throughout the entire season with Tristana. That and the fact that you also have Caitlyn and 
Lucian being banned as well, I think that would have been a better ban over, say, the Zack or the Riven. Uh, if you want to target the AD pool, yeah. I don't understand the Riven ban, but I think I think the Zack ban's fine. But the Sivir pick coming out from the side of ESG, I haven't seen her in a while either, actually. No, not at all. And, and the Ari pickup. Yes, it will. The then... RE changes actually haven't come out yet, if anyone's heard of those. They were thinking about adding the 20% extra damage back onto her E. Which could make mm. her a much better assassin, but those haven't come out this patch yet, so it's the same old RE you're used to. The War Pickup does come up for War Hood, and honestly, I like Frosty's team comp way more than ESG's. I want to agree with you on this one. I think that minus the... Uh... Mm, that's the lack of wave clear. I do like what Frosty have a lot more. They have. I I just like the Aurelia clear. pick. I think everything other than the Aurelia pick here is great. I don't love it. You don't love it. I mean, I think it's actually pretty good against what ESG has. It's not really going to be killed a whole lot by Sivir and Ari too much. And as long as the Aurelia is able to get ahead or go even the laning phase, I do think she beats Nautilus. Yeah, she should be able to. She could probably work onto a split push. They could probably do like a 1-3-1 one, one comp, if anything, have Swain in the sideline as well with the double TP. But I don't know. I, I, I think I would have rather seen something like a Maokai or something. Mm. Yeah, I think that there's enough tank on their team, though, which is kind of weird to say, but they have Aurelian Warwick, both of which... Yeah, and Swain, who is deceptively tanky with all the healing from his ulti. And Tarek, who you can't discount with his W shield and his true to, or his uh, invulnerability ult for an entire team. Yes. Interesting now, enough, we see the Ignite here from Sivian and Death Scythe. Maybe they're gonna try and... Mind. Maybe they can go... Maybe they're going to go for more of a kill lane. It's going to be very interesting to see the mid lane action. If anything, I think Swain just wants to farm it out a little bit with his TP. Get some roams on and something and just like punish the Ari for not taking teleport. But if Ari does land a charm, that could mean bad news for the Swain. Same with Thresh if he lands a hook. Yeah, that would definitely be pretty problematic if those skill shots land for ESG. But at the same time, how are you feeling about... Frosty having the double TP versus ESG having TP Ignite. Uh, I'd much rather have the double TP here. You just have so much more global pressure on the map, which it's a team game right now. I mean, if you can snowball lead with the Ari, then the Ignite's great and all, but like, I think you just have so much more options with the double TP than the Ignite TP, personally. Yep. Especially since bot lane is such a vital role right now, you can just roam to bot lane so much easier with the teleport hmm. like let's say there's let's say nautilus starts tp'ing then you have swain and Aurelia able tp that's going to be a four versus three or yeah hmm. like yeah that would be the case but we'll see uh i i definitely like the ignite on the thrush more than an exhaust i think ignites the much better summoner spell to take on supports now especially after the buffs and the nerfs to heal I just think you have so much more kill pressure with it now. I mean, Exhaust is still great for, like, later game fights and stuff, or, like, when you need to just, like, limit someone's damage, but I think you just get, can get so much more of a lead with the Ignite. I think it's, like, invaluable right now. Yeah, I'd agree with you on that one, but something I do want to kind of hover on towards is the junglers here. Stwani, yes. Warwick, who do we think is going to be making more early moves and where? I'd probably say the Warwick. That champion is disgustingly strong right now. Like, something with like a 54% win rate with an absurdly high play rate. If you want to win some jungle games, you're going to want to be playing some Warwick. Mm. I definitely think that might be the case, but Sejuani is also very good at early gank, and I yes. think we might see something early on from Ignorant here. True, true. But you gotta remember, they didn't nerf the tank items, and we'll actually see what keystones and masteries and runes that they are, they're all taking in just a second here, actually, as we load in. We will. Now, I don't expect anything too crazy. In the earlier or on in the season, we saw some very interesting things like um, Glacial Augment, Thresh, and Caitlyn, which uh, did not work out. <laughs> Spoiler. Uh, but as the season's very much developed, I don't think we're gonna see anything too wacky. 
Most likely not. We do see double press the attack coming out from the Warwick and the Aurelia here. Should be quite interesting. Phase rush on the Ari. I haven't seen that before, actually. Huh. It's a, it's an interesting choice. I like the thought process because you have the speed up as minor it is from the Q and add that on to the phase rush. So, it's not a bad on paper, but is it bad in execution? We shall see. Press the attack coming from the Varus. I, I don't like that too much. I think fleet footwork is invaluable. Even after the nerfs when hitting a minion, the healing you get from it, I think it's still by far the better one to take. Hmm. Yeah, clear footwork absolutely helps out a lot, and hence why it's being on the Sivir here as well. Um, I don't think Pressy Tech's terrible here. It's not terrible, agree, but... Saying that fleet of footwork would have been a lot better. Especially since the Taric took exhaust here, so you're not even going to, like, go too hard for the kills. Oh, either way, uh, we launch right onto the ESG Gen Assist in their last matchup of the season against Frost Esports on the red side. Who do you think will win? Uh, I'd have to put my bets on Frost here. I just think their team comp is just superior at the moment. Especially with the press the attack work, that guy's going to hurt early game if you get into a skirmish with them. A lot of ton pings. of pings on the bot side here from both teams, actually. We may uh, see something uh, going on. A, a five-man from Frosty to the bot lane here, and a five-man oh from ESG. Oh, my lord. Okay, so, we know it's happening. Uh... Sure is. <laughs> I think they're going to spot each other. No, oh, spot. I, ESG oh. for sure spotted Frosty. I'm almost certain of it. <laughs> oh, both teams going into the Round. rushes. Oh my goodness, and if they wait too long, and... oh boy, this could turn out... Uh-oh! Uh-oh! Whoa! <laughs> like Both teams kind of dodging each, dodge other. each other. This, this almost looks scripted. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't even think they're gonna ever spot each other. Deep words coming out done. from both teams. Recalls initiated for the top laner of ESG. They know something's up. Uh oh, Frosty's. Uh -oh. Or ESG's gonna run right into Frosty. Saver's gonna run no, wait. over. Oh, no, it's oh. Only one man. Oh, what in the world? What is going on? They don't even know that it happened. That's the. Oh, Ari part. spotting the Swain. Jo Thresh and Sejuani are walking towards the red buff. Can they finish it before they come, though? They sure can. Uh -oh. Wait, the oh, the hook That's coming out. Land. And now a 3v2 level 1 flash away from Ignorant. And I tell you what, flash away, a, a juke flash from Death Scythe 101 as well. Uh, that was a, still get what they want. That's a pretty crazy level 1. Sivir getting a slight push on the wave there, but she's actually going to lose out on that because the Thresh is forced to recall. Corrupting parts pot starts from both top leaders here. Pretty standard stuff. Um. Yeah. So <laughs> that was really weird. Right? <laughs> yeah. Even though ESG didn't die, Ignorant is royally screwed over. Now he's only now getting to his blue buff uh, as Warhood starting to get Warwick, closer yeah. and closer to 10 CS. Warwick has so much. We actually see. Sorry to interrupt you, but we actually see a level two roam from the phase rush Ari here. We could see a kill, uh -oh. a flash from Fit There's Fringe. Flash done. Sivian, not able uh. to land the Q, though it's flash. Oh, the away. flash from the Ari! Oh, he goes back in, gets stunned. Misses the charm, and he's dead! And Kuala picks up the kill. Not gonna be able to turn to two, but is able to take the trade kill. Generally, you don't want to roam as a level two Ari when you have the wave advantage, but... I mean... Ugh. Tarek's done missing the Sivir. Also, wasting the spell shield there, actually. We'll be a little bit vulnerable for the next bit. But going back on the top of Warwick versus Sedge, this work has so much more early tempo now, and we'll see how he uses it. Yeah, I definitely agree with that, and that's going to help them out a lot. But another thing that we were touching on was the jungle pressure, which is only going to get worse and worse for yes. Aaron here. The hook misses Shy Quinn just by a little bit, taking a lot of harass though from the minion wave. 
Swain, look at Swain CS lead on this RE right now. That, that's just, it's crazy because why would you level two roam and then blow all your summoners for uh, just a trade kill? I mean, it's first blood, yeah, but you're, you're kind of down 700 gold for your team. That's not good. Yeah, that's not what they want at all. Hopefully, for ESG, Sivian can recover as he does have a kill over at Navigate in the mid lane now, but CS wise, it's only going to be looking worse. A rampaging koala is 300 gold above fridge right now. Ooh, Flash being forced out by Navigate. Damn, unfortunate. That's one way to help get yourself back up in CS as an RE player. For sure. Sejuani so, spotted on a war doing her Raptor camp. Warwick should be spotted too, but I think the gank's actually going to go off. The stun I think connecting. Maybe too little too late for Fridge on this one. Lands the dredge line against the. They wall. don't have enough he damage. Might... Actually, no, they don't. He's too tanky, and they're not going to go underneath the turret. Now in the bottom lane, Frost is taken pretty low from that one, but ESG, you don't go any further. We're clearing out the control word. A lot more vision from the side of ESG here, actually, so far. Ooh, Fridge getting a little bit low there. God Press the attack. The field, one more auto. Ooh. Damage. One more would do it. Not gonna go for it. Now one trick mid. Very low in the bottom lane. That's gonna be trade damage back onto Thrash. Frost very low from the third. Ignite. One more auto will do it. ESG pick up one kill. Can they pick up two? Dazzle gets spell shielded by Sever. A few more hits would do it. Boomerang Blade goes wide on that one. And Shy Quinn is able to get out. One trick mid. More like a one trick bot. Beating out Nova in the 2v2. That's super bad for the Varus there. I mean, Thresh picks up the kill, but that doesn't mean too much. Oh, Gank coming from Ignorant party. here. Out of ESG, a Koala doesn't fall for it. Warwick's running up, though. There's the stun. They might just have baited them into a bait. Warhood now up in your fridge, way overextending the lane. There's the blade surge to end the kill. The flash fear out of Warhood. It knocks him back, but he gets taken out for it. <laughs> So it goes against him. The big bad wolf taking out too much from the fridge there. Must have been really hungry. <laughs> oh boy. Right. Sivir so picking up her BF sword of Varus' recurve bow. They should win trades really hard here. Fridge actually using the TP here. Really is going to have the TP advantage if they want to make a play bot side. Alright. I like the thought process. But Warhood forgot that there was a turret, <laughs> so it went south really quick. Like, that was actually a really good play uh, if there wasn't a turret there, if he wasn't in the range, because that yeah. would have been a kill, basically. But <sighs> if there was a turret, it went south really quick. I dislike Nautilus's build here, personally, versus the Aurelia Warwick combo. I would have much have rather seen a Ninja Tabby Bramble Vest where he just becomes unkillable. I don't know if you guys, if any of you guys watched this, but recently there was a gathering of warriors versus our resident headcaster, Army Overlord, and one of our moderators, Fred Frederson. And Army was like, he was missing all of his skills, but he built Ninja Tabby Bramble Vest as Scion, and he just won. That That's that's the state of League right now, and I think if Fridge were to do that, I think the lane would be free. Hmm. Swain's, still in, Swain's still having quite a CS lead on the Ari here. Both junglers bot side might want to set up pressure on the ocean void. We're talking about top lane though. Holy moly, there's the Blade Surge Koala looking good on this trade so far. Blade Surge about to be up in a second, but won't go any further. Just forces Fridge definitely has a lane in phase. Ooh, the hook's so close. I dislike... The lands. Ooh. The work W Warhood's coming out. Here. Guys, the ulti. There's no way the Thresh gets out of that one. Frost picks up the kill. Ugh. Good, good job, pre uh, good pressure from Warhood on the bot side there. If anything, Botlink can shove up, take the Ocean Drake. They don't know Sejuani just recalled, but it should be free for them. Personally, I just liked how Nova Frosty was actually positioning there. Like, I think he positioned way too far up. I understand the jungler is bot, but you st still shouldn't do that. Ooh, the Nautilus ult! Bridge, forcing the flash away from Koala, that would have been a kill. Uh, actually has the flash up if he chooses to go underneath the target. Ooh! Button. Close. If Very anything, close. Fridge can try flash hooking him. Ooh, that sounds like a that sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> That's a really bad See, idea. See, if he ever. pulled out his po pocket pick a Mumu top, she would have been dead. Unlucky. She All right. Vera should not be this close in a Sivir lane, especially like 
It's like, oh, the backwards oh. Q. Oh, oh, okay. We'll pretend that that didn't happen. Varus is what? Again before. Oh, the yeah, sedge though. Level five. Uh oh, level five. The TP and coming the out. On the frost, cosmic radiance. Sivir is out of position here. From Koala, spell shield to stun. But how much is it gonna mean at our, at our right afterwards? Shy Quinn picks up the kill. Ari! Down the bottom lane. Gets hit by the dazzle though. Gets hit by the exhaust. Frost will get taken out here. A Sivian very low. Glacial Prison hits level six. Ooh. Flashes away. Koala is able to get a trade kill right before it, but it goes beautifully in favor of ESG. Ah, the TP from Koala wasn't enough here. That's really bad for the bot lane of Frosty. Sivir gets to push in a wave. She, she's gonna she's just gonna be so strong. And they pick up the ocean drink too. Yeah, definitely, uh, when Frosty had the opportunity, uh, for whatever reason, they didn't actuate. They Neither cancel the, the Drake. So, Juwani, okay. running into the wrong side of the jungle here. No mana, no flash, Varus is... Navigate has flash, if he decides to use, we'll see if the poor can get out of this one. Oh. There's a lantern, and... She's out. Really She's odd out. pathing from Navigate there. We'll clear out this control ward and the zombie ward. Probably go back to mid and push in the wave. If anything, the bot lane of Frosty should try and shove that bot lane as fast as possible before Sivir gets there. Yeah, definitely, and uh... Ooh, the Ari charm connects. A little bit of trade. Aaron backing uh, at a point where he believes he can no longer be chased whatsoever. You got that little fear of someone still chasing you. It wasn't the case, but still chose to go the extra effort to make sure that it wasn't the case at all. Sivir already having her two main components. The Suede Root lands, so does the Q and W. So is the Charm. Could go a little further on this one. Navigate. Good. It's the trade damage. Uh, and it's actually in favor of Sivia. It almost looked like Navigate, like, lagged out there. He kind of just stood there and auto-attacked in the minion wave. Yeah, that was a little... Uh, oh, this poor lane for the Aurelia, dude. Look at this. Oh, my lord. Fritch is going on this one. One more auto. Would do it. The Flash... Uh, does secure the kill as he doesn't get taken out by the turret afterwards. Fridge doesn't even need the ninja ta tabby bramble vest. He just destroyed her. Yeah. This this did. is my issue with the Aurelia pick. She's just like, if this happens, the Nautilus is going to be so much more useful in fights. I think. How how is Aurelia going to dive onto a Nautilus, Sedjuani, Ari, Sivir, Thresh? It's so hard. Yeah, it's almost so hard it might be impossible if the lead's uh, extended so far. But while we're talking about leads and you know, extending... Uh... Swain needs the ulti right here. Oh, it's a three, oh, man. There he is. Oh, dodges uh, the ultimate with the flash. And the three man doesn't work out in the favor of ESG Genesis. Uh... They might start the Herald here. They do. No vision from Frosty on the top side. They're, they're kind of in the dark here. They are definitely in the ESG trying to make the best of not being able to get the catch in the mid lane. They're able to secure the Rift Herald from what looks like just about 100% uncontested. Damn, I, I didn't think the Sejuani was going to out pressure the ward, but by God, she is. The early lead meant nothing. Rift I mean, Herald picked up. Farm discrepancy. Oh, for sure, but yeah. the two kills make up for it. Spell shield yeah, block, the hook connects. Ooh, no, the TP. Under it, but the teleport, instant regret for that one, as Thresh gets locked up and taken out. Navigate picks up the kill. <sighs> that, see, that right there is why I prefer the double TP. That, that's such a feels bad moment as a bot lane when it's going to be so hard for your Ari to roam and then just both of them have double TP. You can't go for plays like that when their TP's up. You get the hook and you just have to use it to harass. You can't go for the all-in. The TP yeah. from Fridge coming out here could be a yeah. waste unless the hook that connects. Could be really big, but Fridge not quite in range to land the dredge line is for us to uh, get out before they go for the dive. Said you want to spot on a word top side. Midwave pushing in. We actually could see first turret mid lane here with the Sejuani going there. We Thresh could. running top side of all places, changing his director or trajectory. Silver spell shield coming out. Tarek E misses, and then, yeah, this is first turret. If that's first start, Shelly's gonna secure it, but will they get punished for it right afterwards? They uh, will not. 
We see Aurelia coming down. The work all connects. Cancelled though all instantly. Cancelled right afterwards. The combo from Sivian right afterwards. But Terracol comes flying down. First you can do whatever they want right now as they pick up the kill on the Sejuan. Ah. Uh, mispositioning from her there. They should have backed out as soon as possible. Um, you know what I want to hear? What do you want to hear? When are these teams going to get the Ocean Dragon? There have been multiple attempts by both teams to try and get it. And they both fl they both flip-flopped on it. Yeah, I'd honestly love to have an Ocean Drake on my, like, two tanks and Ari and a Sivir. That'd be fantastic. And hell, it'd be great on a Warwick and Swain, too, and Taric. Spam those heals. Who do you think is going to get it? Like, I don't know if I can say when, but I do want to ask who. I'd probably say Frosty with the TP advantages they do have. Just have a Rampaging Koala split push top wave. Someone has to respond to it. If it's Fridge, his TP's down. If it's Sivian, he doesn't have TP at all. If it's the bot lane, then you just do drag for free because it's going to be um, a 3v4 for them. But we'll see. Both junglers on the bot side here. Vision down on the drag for both sides. Like when clearing the ward, Warhood shows, Thresh gets stunned. There's the dazzle, pops on the hunt right afterwards. They don't want the hook connects. Trouble. Not gonna go after it though, as they just ran away. Now up in the top lane, oh. Koala looks for some damage on the fridge, doesn't go any further. So little damage. The dragon started up by the side of Frosty, pulling it out a little bit. They want to finally secure the Ocean Dragon 15 minutes in, but we've seen how inconsistent I think they have it. This dragon has ignorant Ooh. Not able to land this fight in time. It's actually Frost that picks it up, but the fight right afterwards. ESG, they've lost one man. Frost, you're about to lose one of their own right afterwards. As Deathside picks up the kill. Sivir doing good damage in the fight, and suddenly a quadra <laughs> kill for Navigate. Hold on. And an ace 16 minutes into the game. What in the world? Oh, uh, if you're ESG there, you just want to give up the dragon. You don't have the positional advantage there. Super risky from ignorant diving right in there, and it, it costs them their team. Swain is now so huge, and and, and Varus too, completing the rage blade. He's at his power spike. Aurelia finishing the Trinity Force. You you don't want to fight Frosty here. I'm actually so confused at what just happened. And Frosty are the record-setting team. They got the longest game on their book here, and I think the shortest ace we've ever seen. <laughs> Ooh, Shai Quinn gonna be the pickup prize though for overstaying slightly. Uh, looks like he is. There's no way they don't get that kill onto the tar. Wait a minute. Would do it. Wait a minute. No, wait, oh. no, There's the flail. There's no way it doesn't happen. One more hit to come through. Shai Quinn will go down. Work has the ulti. Does he connect it? He sure does! Looking for it there, he does in front to rest, navigate, another kill! Ugh, this game has got opened up wide, Swain is just so huge! You're gonna have to pick up Grievous Wounds now, and the Grievous Wounds on the Sejuani is not enough right now. Ari might need to get a Morello, Sivir might need to get an Executioners, you just, you gotta shut down that Swain now, he's so huge! And, and the Warwick too, and the Taric, you, and the, all of their champions heal besides Varus really, until he gets lifesteal. Yeah, and that's, I mean, I, the quadra kill still uh, dazzling me here as much as it's probably dazzling ESG Genesis. Uh, and there you go, Rod of Ages, Zanya's 17 minutes in. Oof. Fridge is all armor right now, too, versus the Fed Swain. He's, that refrigerator's gonna get opened up and all the food's just gonna spoil, I mean. Ugh. Ugh. It's pretty gross. They are, and they have three men on the top half trying to pick the up charm the charm connects. Might the hook connects. Instead. The hook's gonna connect. Ooh. In all sorts of trouble. Lands a double knockup with the death turret. But ESG might have forgotten that they don't have a target on this one. Zivian goes back the in. Swain. And out. Gets in. Still has the spear rush on the hunt to come through from one trick mid. Koala looking for the all in. The Sivir walking up. They're going for this one. This is a very drawn-out fight, but finally Sejuani does go down. Cosmic Radiance pop. It's a double kill for Nova X Frost. A another kill. Navigate goes <laughs> godlike as Koala does not give a care in the world. They're looking to pick up Sivian, and they will be able to. The triple goes over to Frost, 
and one trick man to be <sighs> only man up has to get out of way. There were so many issues in that fight from both teams there. No more Frosty, that ulti? You should have just went for the ulti on Fridge there, get the early kill on him. Instead, he just whiffs it on the Ari. A lot of positional issues, but in the end, Frosty's just so far ahead, it doesn't matter. Swain goes in 1v5 and they can't do anything. Yeah, they can't. And now they're looking for another turret, the fifth one. 19 minutes in, it's not gonna go over just yet, but it's down to half. Uh, if you're ESG here, I, I actually, there's so little you can do. You honestly just need to try and stall as much as possible, let your Sivir get her items. Uh, speaking of the Executioner's Calling, I know I said she should have bought it, but not that early. You need to, like, at least get your zeal, then buy it, and even then, I think you should have two completed items on ADC before getting the Executioner's. Otherwise, you delay your power spike, like, it takes way too long. Now Varus is gonna be huge, he has the completed Runans, the completed Rage Blade, and all Sivir has is an Essence Reaver and an Executioner's Calling. Yeah, that's definitely gonna hurt them, seeing how Sivir... Not even with the zeal, it's for a case of art, you had the zeal, you had the ER, and then you build the executioners, okay. But yeah. you don't have the zeal, so you're she, not- she, Yeah. Her wave clear gets gutted. Her her general DPS is gutted, and it's just, what you gonna do? Yeah. Baron has now spawned, Dragon is spawning in a, about a minute and 20. It's just like- Yes, and about the Baron, because- you're saying how ESG need time, and that much I agree with you 100%, they need time. But they also, if they want to get back into this game, they are very much relying on a big mistake yes. by Frosty. And but so, a little, Frosty, a little overconfident, go for that Baron. Uh, can't forget about what Sijuani and Nautilus have been doing in these fights so far. You gotta remember, Frosty has been making a lot of mistakes in these fights, and if ESG gets strong enough, they could capitalize on them. I, I personally dislike the itemization here from both tanks. They really need to get some form of magic resist because a ton of that Varus build's damage is magic damage, and Swain is one of the biggest people here. A misposition from Swain here? What is he doing? Oh, Navigate gets hit by the charm, the glacial prison, the shutdown going over to Severa. And that's gonna cancel the Baron Asher option for Frosty right afterwards. Mistakes like that will cost him the game. We see the Sivir ulti popped here. I don't think they're gonna get anything. ESG are not sure they want to go for, so several D oh, the fast. Flash Arctic Assault to come through. They're going to go on towards Koala as they finally made up their mind. Warhorse the fight's begun. The fight. A huge cosmic radiance rains down on Sir Frosty Esports. Uh, and Fridge is on the wrong side of the map right now uh, as it looks like Sivian next to get jumped on. Frosty pile on towards him. Won't chase afterwards as Baron Asher's now on the cards. Uh, Navigate gets caught there. With him down, you're going to want to try and get some, like, lane pressure, get some vision control. Not look for a fight immediately after. You got to pick. You just got to keep getting those build it up, and then you might be able to fight. But immediately, they just fight, and that's terrible. And now Frosty just pick up the Baron. Yeah, and uh, it's been like this all season for... ESG Genesis, and once again, they face themselves a 10,000 gold deficit about 22 minutes in. Jinkies, dude. Earth Drake gonna go down to the side of Frosty as well. Sivir's build- Okay. <laughs> Sivir building the- The last- yeah, um, the last whisper second. Esports now going for the Mountain Dragon. No contest whatsoever. They will pick it up. Frosty's the one that secures it. And is there any way for ESG to get back into this game? Yes uh, no? not when Sivir's building Last Whisper second item versus the one armor item that's a ninja tabby on Frosty. <laughs> well, you know, I think I like it at the same time. You know, it's, um, it's different. You don't see it every uh, day. There's, there's probably a reason you don't <laughs> see it every day. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm trying to defend the pick as much as possible. Yeah, uh, admittedly very difficult. <laughs> Essence Reaver second, coming up on the Sivir. Right, Fridge actually lane. can't handle the Aurelia yeah, anymore. Little, Fridge! The shield is about to go very quickly, and while he's pretty tanky... Uh, Fridge still hasn't hard. finished his boots! Why haven't you finished Ninja Tabby, man? Yeah, you don't even have tier 1 boots, that's so Wait bad! Okay, that much I'm not gonna defend. Why don't you have boots? You're Nautilus! 
Fridge doesn't have boots. One trick mid built mortal reminder second. They have phase rush Ari. I don't know what these guys are doing. Oh. Oh boy, I think this game there. is just over for the side of ESG. I, I don't think there's much to do. Especially with how Fridge has been optimizing this game. If Varus builds the AP build, which I really think he should, both of these tanks are going to die in an instant. I mean, are they really tanks at that point? If they die in an instant, I don't know. <laughs> They're like supposed to be. They'll be tanky versus the Aurelia. And even then, Aurelia's doing a ton of damage to Fridge. Yeah, I'm not really sure what of a make of it. ESG, uh down 12,000 gold only 24 minutes in after rely on a massive misstep by Frost Day. Yeah. And uh, one trick goes down right afterwards. Uh, now Glacial Prison doesn't matter for us. They don't have to worry about the, the Swain don't have to worry about damage uh, as they run for another kill now and not going to be able to pick it up. Uh, Dredge line lands, but the Zanya stasis right afterwards. One trick does go down. Death side the next one to follow uh, as Fridge uh, Dies in his own base. Uh, looks like they will try to get zipping, but it's not gonna matter. I think Frosty got the game right there. That's gonna be game, dude. Ooh, the root connects. Will we see another kill for the side of Frosty? Ooh. It looks like we just might. Might not. Either way, Frosty Esports. Uh, the ESOP, uh, we question it. It doesn't matter at all because Warhood puts on a great performance. Uh, as ah. Frosty Esports pick up the game one against ESG Genesis. Wow. What what an interesting game. <laughs> yes, capitalize the first three letters of that as well. So, EC Genesis have more game left in the entire season. Hopefully, we can close it out with the W. But before we get to that, we got to look at some of these numbers. Whoa, a ton of damage coming from Civi in there, actually. Quite surprising. Yeah, actually, uh, most damage in the game at 20k in a 25-minute match. Very, you know, as you said, surprising. I did not expect that. I'm really surprised that Sivir actually somehow damaged Nova here. <laughs> Especially with the Mortal Reminder second. Quite an interesting choice. Huh. Warwick actually oh. doing the least amount of damage in the game. That's really shocking. Well, admittedly, the fights weren't that frequent for Frosty, as much as objectives were dropping like dominoes. Yeah. That's more so what the problem was for ESG, and the fact that they couldn't defend those objectives. Yes, very true. Hovering down here to... Uh, let's go to the wards, actually. Let's go straight to those. Look at the vision score on the Thresh! So many oh. wards. 49 for Shy Quinn. We talked about how good his mid lane play was. His support looks just as good, dare I say, uh, with 30 wards in a 25 minute game. Look, oh man, look at the damage taken by the Warwick, though. 23,000 damage. Quite a tanky mm. fellow. Indeed. Very good stuff to come out of Warhood in uh, his debut gate. B debut game here, so excellent stuff coming out of Frost Esports. Uh, looking at the control wars, purchased highest one goes over to the support for ESG or for Frost Esports. <coughs> mm. <laughs> so, uh, not bad at all. We see a few zeros on the board, unfortunately, but hopefully those numbers will go up and maybe even the win count for ESG as well. Can ESG Genesis come back? And tie it up and force a mystical three-way tie or e or will Frost Esports just take home the fourth place seed. We'll be right back at you with that answer.
welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Frost Esports versus ESG Genesis series in quick fashion. Frosty picked up game one. Can they pick up game number two? Oh, we shall see. Should be an interesting match from both sides. So if you're on the side of ESG, what do you take away from that last game? Probably the Swain. That Swain's such a strong character right now. He's he's honestly insane. Alright, so I'm here in the Swain. Uh, anything else? Or keep it at the Swain. Oh, there goes the Swain. Um, I would personally like to see the Varus taken away like you said. Mm. I don't believe I said that, but okay, Varus yeah. is on the list. <laughs> uh, nonetheless, <laughs> um, I do- th I agree. I- well, I didn't say it probably read my mind regardless. I don't think that Varus would be a bad- ban here whatsoever. In fact, I think they should go for it in this game. Uh, however, it's an AD carry, and unless it gets down to second ban phase, I don't think you should ban it. Right here, uh, I wouldn't agree, because you're an AD carry main, chances are you can pick up any ban. Taric ban coming out, interesting. I think it's good. I actually agree with that. I didn't think of the Tarek, but I think that's definitely a good ban from the side of ESG. For sure. The first pick, Aurelia again. Interesting. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Should work, actually. It did pretty well outside of the first little bit of lane phase versus the Nautilus. I wonder what we'll see if- Ooh, Caitlyn first pick. One of the stronger ADs out there. Not as strong as Zyra Khan, but yeah. it's pretty good. I, I I would love people to play Zyra Khan. That combo is so busted on this patch. Zaya hasn't been nerfed yet. Rakan has been buffed. They did that little interaction fix, but it's still such a strong combo. It's, it's just it's so right. strong. Yeah, you can definitely see it, but I could also equally not see it, but. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Yep. The Aurelian Soul Hover here. Surprised somebody actually wants to play that. Warwick picked up from Warhood again. Quite impactful, objective-wise, last game. And the Orianna. The Echo Hover. I like that much more than the Aurelian Soul. Let's see if he goes. Ah! <laughs> Okay. Okay. In my honest opinion, Vladimir is one of the most broken characters in the game. So we'll see if they can use it to affect here. Let me get in there. The right. Triss ban coming out, I think that's always a fine ban. I'm surprised people yeah. aren't banning Ezreal. He's still one of the like best ADs out there this patch. Braum ban coming out. I, I, I think Braum's an absurdly good support, so I'm cool with that. Give me a virus. Waiting for it. Honestly. It is one of the most comfortable champions. He's performed well on this one. Ah! And the band does come through. There we go. I'm very fine with that band. Yeah, definitely. Um, looking down the list, what might we see uh, for the supports in this game? I think Morgana is an obscene combo with Caitlyn. I, I think that's one of the stronger supports with the Caitlyn. If you wanted to go more of the supportive style, I was about to say Janna, but they banned her, which is a good ban. Zillion. Um, that could be a Zillion mid, Vladimir top, but I'm gonna go with that's the Zillion support. The Jinx coming out. It's an interesting matchup. I think Jinx is much harder of a hyper carry than the Caitlyn is, but can she get out of the lane phase is the question. Makes me question why they banned the Janna, seeing how Jinx Janna is a personal <coughs> favorite, but... Uh, we'll see what they lock in for the support, how they have gone from top to bot in perfect order. Trundle support! Huh. Interesting. I'm not entirely sure if this is a thought process, but I'm assuming he's going to just use subjugate on the tanks, if assuming they ever get Subjugate the Sejuani when her passive is up, and you get so much armor in MR, it's insane. The Orn coming out, actually, so it is the Zillion- Actually? 
It could be an Orn. Oh, it it is the Zillion no. Okay, it's Vlad Min. Right. Orn top. You yeah. don't. I mean, Orn support is not terrible. It's not terrible, but after all the nerfs, I wouldn't play it anymore. No. Heal coming out from Navigate here. Interesting choice of summoner. Ignite from both supports here. He might have a pretty kill, pretty big kill lane on her hands here. Double TP on the side of ESG this time, which I do favor over the non-double TP. Alright, so looking at the matchups here. Top lane, Orn versus Aurelia. Do we think it's going to look the same as last time, or do we think Orn's a little more sustainable in comparison to Nautilus? Uh, I think Orn's a little bit more sustainable. They did remove his Unstoppable, which could be big, but he should be fine. Hmm. And now we have our three-minute wait. Yes, Ignite actually changed out from the TP here. Huh. And Orianna actually has a cleanse, which is mainly going to be for the Sejuani yeah. ganks, I'd imagine. Yes, Interesting. Would... You can also cleanse the Ignite. Uh, yeah, you could. You could. You could definitely. But it's mainly there for Sejuani, as you mentioned, and I do think it is a good pickup. Yes. Uh, same jungler matchup. Very similar mm -hmm. top matchup. Bot lane <laughs> is going... Bot lane could be super volatile. Zillion actually trading out the ignite that he had for the exhaust. I think that's all right. I, I'd i rather see the ignite personally, but I, I'm pretty biased with it personally. But whatever. Toronto support is going to be very interesting, though. How do you think it's going to go? Zillion Trundle? I think Trundle is either going to two-shot them, like, if he can get onto them, he's going to two-shot them, or he just gets poked out and he cries. So, we'll see. Mm. I think in terms of the AD carry matchup, Jinx wins it pretty hard. Oh, uh, Caitlyn wins has, that. Uh, Caitlyn actually you know? wins that early, yes. Caitlyn will outrange the Jinx for most of that matchup until, like, when Jinx, like, levels up her Q quite a bit. And even then, I think Caitlyn has a stronger early game. Jinx will, of course, auto faster when she has her minigun out, but if she has her minigun out, she's gonna be poked by the Caitlyn. Well, that's what I, that's how I feel on most Caitlyn matchups, because that's 100% relying can the Caitlyn use her range or not, and I'm not sure how uh, versatile one trick mid is on uh, this Caitlyn pickup, because I have yet to see uh, Caitlyn's impress me in the BSGCS. Yet to see it. True. Um, so in that regard, I think that just how the mindset works around this level of play, it's going a little in favor of the Jinx. You have the attack speed, you have uh, the crowd control uh, chompers, you have the ra long range zap. Um, hopefully this doesn't happen in one trick mid, but I do think it's going to go in favor of the Jinx. Uh, I don't know. If, if both of them play to like the standards or whatever, like average standards, Caitlyn should win that. Depending on the player, though, maybe the Jinx could win it, but I think Caitlyn should win this matchup hands down. We'll see which one of us is right. Yeah, we'll and see. I'll, I love being proven wrong here on this one. So we'll see if that's the case or not. As we are a few seconds away from hopping into the game here. Uh, ESG Genesis, uh, it's their last game of the entire season. Uh, can they... Uh, move the dominoes, make it all fall apart, and cause havoc in the BSGCS for a three-way tie. Ah, uh, we'll be EU. Everyone in there loves their ties. I love my ties, but I don't love them three-way. <laughs> it just sounds bad. No. I don't know. Have you ever seen someone wear a three-way tie before? I've never seen That's exactly why. I've never seen it. Well, it could, it could be an ex-fashion trend for all we know. Next fashion trend? Yeah, you never know. It's a know. fashion trend I don't want to be a part of. <laughs> Sounds like a bad fashion trend, but okay. Yeah. Alright, as we load in. Standard runes and masteries from all of them. Phase rush on the Vlad. Going to be able to dive a lot. Actually, Trundle support has pressed the attack. That he does. Huh. You like that? Or do you disagree with that? Um... 
I, if you can get on top of them, I do like that. At the start of the season, people were actually running press the attack Leona. <laughs> and people were, were legit level 2 cheesing people with Ignite. She'd proc the press the attack and the ADC would one-shot them and it was gross. Oh my. Yeah. That sounds spooky. We'll see if Shag Queen can replicate something similar against Death Scythe and one-trick mid in the bottom lane. Yes. Zillion checking the bush with his bomb. Standard stuff. Oh, oh there's one auto. Ooh, Nindarin. game's over. Gets hit. Frosty wins. Game's over. Holy moly. That's the game, ladies and gentlemen. No, it's not. I'm ignorant. Just gets hit by not even the clockwork windup is the second auto didn't go off. Ooh, interesting start from the Vlad here. Going with the D shield. Huh. Hmm. A little more tankiness and survivability. We have a dance party going on in the mid lane here. Who's moves do you like better, the Jinx or the Vlad? Ooh, I don't know. I'm gonna give it to the Vlad. A I'm more. gonna give it to the Jinx. Yeah. Uh oh, wait, there's the BM! Frosty! A lot I of no manners at all. That's actually really bad. Damage. That's actually really bad for the Vlad. I mean, he took D Shield, which was something I was gonna comment on, but. Huh. BM from Frosty here. Vlad healing back a little bit with his Q, though. Standard start from both junglers here. Sedge getting her blue, Warwick getting his red. Zillion going with the Spell Thieves here. Gonna do a lot of poke damage. Yes, it's gonna do some good damage. We'll see how well Deathside can land these time bombs yes. on him, though. Because it's just as easy as it is to hit it, it is just as easy to miss it. Actually, I'm gonna disagree with you on that. Zillion, with his E, the slow, I believe his E is the slow, can actually make it nearly impossible to dodge the bombs. Oh yeah, there's the slow. Yes. <laughs> there's the slow and the speed up. There's I the forgot. slow, the speed up. Well, I, I think the speed up is one of the most valuable things on a Zillion and his ulti as well. I, I, yeah, you have a 700 movement speed Caitlyn running at you? It's crazy. I've never Ooh, seen Sivian this, but getting I might. low. Ah, uh, I, I played Vayne with Zillion, one of the most fun games I've ever had. Ooh, the bot lane of Frosty level hitting level two, two here. Caitlyn's gonna die, Here's actually. Very low in this when there's Ignite, and she's gone! The bomb, and Ignite picks it up. Ah. <sighs> See, in cases like that where the ADC mispositions, they hit level 2 first inside of Frosty. Ooh, Sejuani gank oh, wow, though, on a navigate. Sanguin pull from Sivian, he's low on this one, but they are gonna be able to secure Ooh. the kill. Ignorant uh, slaps the Poro snack on him and picks up the kill. Kill's going back and forth here. But I was gonna comment on, the Trundle support, if the ADC mispositions when they hit level 2 on the side of Frosty, they just do that and she dies. She has to blow Flash immediately, or she's just dead. And misplay from Caitlyn there and Trundle took the advantage of it. Trundle support is something you can capitalize on the mistakes of an ADC with, but if the ADC plays well, it's, it's a pretty bad pick, I think. Here's my thing. I wouldn't call that a misplay as much as I would call that disrespect because they hit level two uh, and they uh, still walked forward. They didn't back off. Uh, that, that's a, right that's, a mis uh, that's a misplay though. You're you're misplaying by walking up, you know? I mean, it could yeah, be considered uh, disrespect, but like, you, yeah. you gotta know that. That's just like standard bot lane stuff. If they hit level two, depending on what bot lane they have, you need to play safe. Definitely the case, and not playing safe there is what got them killed. Yes. Might have just been good on Frosty, which it definitely was, but hopefully we'll see this Caitlyn be able to bounce back in the laning phase as the kill. It didn't go on to the Jinx. Getting your Jinx, uh, yeah. Getting your Jinx ahead, though, is... Oh, oof. That's gonna be rough on the Caitlyn. Yes, that is, and... Now, out of all people, Caitlyn getting zoned. There's the pillar, Ooh, there's the net, the zap to the follow fear. through. Uh, there's the flash, Fiera, to come through. One more hit would do it. The bomb won't connect Ooh. in the HP, nor will the jump be able to do enough. It's just the flash away from Shai Quen. The bite not being enough. There's a trade in top lane, though. Fridge getting the worst end of this. Oh, Might have to... boy, definitely taking the worst end no of flash. it. no Of last game, Rampaging Koala picks up the kill. And now Deadside might be in trouble. The slow from the pillar to come through. 
the fear as well. One more hit would do it, and this time the flash ah. isn't available to pick up the kill. Unfortunate Trundle Pillar, they blocked the Warwick Cube just slightly, but they do blow the flash in the end. Great solo kill from a Rampaging Koala, though. Definitely the case, and uh, so far, so good for Frosty. They got the pressure applied, they got the kills, they have the gold lead, as minor as it may be at this stage. Mind you, five minutes in gold leads are big either way, but nothing in the thousand just yet. Yes. And we see the double cloth armor coming from Fridge here. Stacking up his shelves with a lot of armor is really good versus the Aurelia. Definitely is. Hopefully, uh, he manages to pick up boots this game. Wouldn't be a bad choice oh to follow. Yeah. Tabby's wouldn't be bad. Ah, uh, Tabby's would be excellent this game. Helps versus the Warwick Autos, helps versus Jinx and Aurelia. Work rushing the team out here, wanting to get his clear down as fast as possible. Caitlyn shoving in the bot wave. Oh boy. I don't like, I was. I expected it to be a Ooh. little more in favor of you. But this is really terrible at a one trick, Ned. Look at the farm discrepancy. You should never have that much of a CS deficit as a Caitlyn. That's just, that's ridiculous. Yeah, oh, creative thinking out of Koala. Doesn't go for the stun, just goes for the flashy moves. Sejuani coming up though, both junglers are topside. Will we see a repeat of what happened last game? We might just, the blade shirt stun, there it is. He's gotta get out of this one somehow. Fridge the slams Ornal. against the wall, call of the forge. The Vlad's come coming. Through. There's the knockup, the Arctic Assault, the extra brittle CC on top of him. Koala, very low from this one. Another stun to come through. Blade Surge away, but I don't think he can get away. Nowhere to go other than to the turret, possibly. Fridge picks up the kill. Ah. Uh, a Rampaging Koala actually didn't get the Q reset there on one of the minions. If he did, he might have been able to do some shenanigans there, but unfortunately he... Gets taken down and the kill goes on Fridge. Fridge actually picking up the Bramble Vest here. I don't think Aurelia is going to be able to do much. No, I don't think so at all. This time, Koala doesn't have the lead that he had last time. Oh. Now in the bottom lane, where's the Zap to come through? Doesn't choose to go for it. This is a rough lane for Caitlyn. Oh. Sejuani's got to try and do something to get a lead on this bot lane because... Caitlyn winning is one of the win conditions of your team comp. I mean, Vlad's gonna scale like a monster, but... <sighs> Actually, the Jinx doesn't have any peel. So, if they can sort of equalize this and just have Vlad skill, I think Jinx might actually be screwed later on into the game. The Trump uh, pillar coming out the Zap. Definitely could be. Lands onto the trap, though. There's the Piltover Peacemaker. Some good trade-back damage. The fish bones come through. Uh, it's gonna force Frosty back. Whew. Oh my god. About an 800 gold lead on the Jinx there compared to the Caitlyn. Oh, Jinx's recall actually getting cancelled. Oh. oh boy, right. The initial bomb damage cancelling it as well. So Frosty's gonna have to stay in lane for a little bit longer than he may have liked. Work having much more farm than Sejuani, which is understandable mm -hmm. since Sej has successfully ganked. Zillion hitting six, which is gonna make bot lane way harder to gank for the side of Frosty. Yes, with that GA ultimate right there, uh, the chrono shift, it's gonna make a lot of things uh, a little bit trickier for Frosty to work around. Well, be it. The pillar, the zap. There's the pillar. The zap connects. They might go for a little more of the trap to try and line up. Oh, Warhood. Where he's going. But in the dragon pit, Sivian picks up a kill on a Warhood. Now in the bottom lane, Frost Frosty's got a run. One kill, but he's got a lot of trouble coming on his side. Ignorant doesn't have the glacial prison, and they're actually not going to go for it. Whew. That's the best case scenario Frosty could hope for there. They Ignorant could have forced, same with Sivian, onto Frosty and dive them under tur. I mean, it is Vlad Sejuani after all, but they don't go for it. Frosty getting away quite lucky there. Yes, they do. And something I want to comment on is um, the double Dorans on Caitlyn. Do you agree with it or do you disagree with it? In that state, it's okay, because you probably couldn't have bought anything else. 
If anything, personally, I would have went for a call and just try to AFK farm it out. You have a zillion, so you <laughs> actually have peel later on into the game and mobility. But we actually see Navigate getting run down by Ignorant and Scythian here. The Oriole he coming is. out. There's the Shockwave to come through. Navigate's gone up the lane for a while in the river, but can he get out of this one? No, he can. He will finally go down as Koala gets himself in trouble right afterwards. Does get to flash over the wall just barely. But that's another kill going in favor of ESG Genesis. Is this the game of ESG? Much better early game map movements. Even gonna pick up the Rift Herald. I don't more, the, the the bot side of Frosty could respond by picking up the air drink, but no. Warhood's actually going top side. Is he gonna try and contest this? There's no air there's no way that he oh. picks it up. He could oh. Warhood pops his head out oh. with Oh he missed it! And now he's gonna have to jump out right afterwards. Uh, Ooh, the exhaust the coming down lane. on Shyquin. The exhaust pretty low. There's the chompers. You can't Jinx pass ult. around that one. Jinx Flash ult. away. Where's this super mega death rocket to come oh. through? It's not gonna matter actually because Shyquin takes the kill for himself. Yikes. Sheen picking up for the Trundle here. He's gonna do so much damage. Fun fact: Trundle actually has more gold than his mid lane navigate. Oh, not, not anymore after the CS, but for a second there. <laughs> well, uh... oh, Caitlyn already down 1,200 gold compared to this Jinx. Yes. That's, unfor that's super unfortunate there. Vlad quite far ahead of Sivian. It's just, this game's just looking great for ESG so far. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, uh, minus the bottom lane, which is heavily in favor of Frosty Esports. Uh, Sejuani uh, has to do something bot lane. Bot lane is super immobile without any peel. It's a free gank waiting to happen, but she hasn't pressured there. Jinx actually uh -oh, taking a ton. Hit by the, the TP! Stun. The TP to come out afterwards as well. The chompers do <gasps> oh! No way for Frost to get out of that one. He gets thawed and taken out as ESG styles on. The Rift Herald coming down here. We're gonna have a turret race. Frosty's pushing mid and top, but ESG is pushing bot as a four man with the Rift Herald. Will we see the first turret? Who's gonna get it? The Vlad ulti, the pool! Vladimir to try and stop it, they know they have the better push. As ESG start knocking on it, he gets taken out afterwards. It does mean the first turret of the game goes over to ESG. Genesis, they pick it up. The mid turret's gonna get delayed, they don't have the wave! No, they don't, and they have to be pretty careful. They're gonna try and work around it, but that's... Is he gonna get executed? Not, not like that! Oh. No, no, no! Okay! They're still pushing bot lane, actually. The They're hero still, play... Of can't defend this all on his own. Rift was at 1,200... Or, yeah, Rift was at 1,200 HP, and that's another turret for ESG! The hero play from Civi in there, they get two bottom turrets. We were talking about how the bottom lane was winning, but now it is literally collapsed, both figuratively, and, uh, What's sad, even yeah. after all that, Caitlyn is still a thousand gold behind the Jinx. <sighs> it's gonna be rough for her. But, hopefully Vlad and Sedge will be able to pick up the slack. A Vladimir or a Caitlyn late game with the Zillion ult is invaluable. Versus two tanks too? It's gonna be- Oh yeah. It's gonna be 100%. crazy. 100%. That is absolutely invaluable, but this really messes up what Frosty were trying to work towards, because yes. uh, now they have to go very, very far to the point where you don't feel safe knocking on that turret if they want to get the bottom lane, because that's a couple waves, that's about three, four waves right there, worth of just straight pushing, and that is three to four waves where your opponent could be just getting sneaking up behind you. Yeah. The Cloud Drake started up by Frosty here. Cloud Drake is super strong this patch after its in-combat movement speed. It's insane. Does get spot out by the Vlad, but too late. Warhood's gonna start up the scuttle, and they just got the objective. They run mid, and we might see a... Huh. We might see the second turret go down. We might. Both teams picked up two for themselves. Mid lane, under fire. Uh, ESG have to defend it. Looks like they will be able to rotate in time. Uh... Red buff picked up by the Caitlyn. We have Fridge split pushing without TP. I think they're gonna back off of mid lane, though. Do think so, and as Frosty Esports go for these turret, so you just keep your eye on Death Scythe 101. I cannot emphasize how much I have seen Zillions make plays happen for their team yes. when sieges are done incorrectly. And AD carry step up a little too far forward as they go for that last auto attack, 
And what do you know, uh, you have another death on the score. Both of Where these does. teams, it's incredibly important to not miss position versus either of them. Mispositioning versus Caitlyn, Sejuani, Vlad, Orn is terrifying, and mispositioning against the Trundle Pillar alone is terrifying, yet alone in Orianna, Warwick, and Aurelia. Oh, Ignorant maybe getting caught out here. No, he's good. Uh, nope, very close to getting caught out, but does back off in time. Caitlyn going for the IE rush first, I think, while Jinx might be going for the BF into Runans. Personally, I like the BF into Zeal item more this game, and I'd wish Caitlyn would have gone that where she went BF into Zeal. Right now, the side of ESG is lacking a lot of wave clear outside of Caitlyn's innate Q, which I think Static Shift would help, like, help her with that, and it would help her get farmed too. Yes. I do agree with you on that 100%. Uh, BF Zeal just gives you uh, more options. You yes. can attack, you have damage, uh, and you don't have to worry too much. It's where going straight for the Infinity Edge isn't a poor yes. choice either, but... I think this game she light. needs the wave clear. Yeah, I agree. You actually see Warhood and Rampage Koala bot lane. They might be diving ignorant. We also see the push mid lane coming out from Frosty. I, I, Ignorant can't hold this alone. I think they should have sent... Why, why is Fridge top? Uh, I don't quite know, but Fridge is top lane. Pick on himself up uh -oh. the Needs to catch up to a Rampage uh -oh. Koala and... I, they're gonna four-man bot. Five-man, actually. Both teams are really close to each other, but Rohood is very low. The turret right on top of him. The Death Rocket goes wide. Zillion ulti, the Chrono Shift, able to save the Sejuani and Thomas Frost. Ooh. They're very greedy on this one, going underneath the turret. They've lost one man so far. ZSG are playing this very good. Another flash now burns from Navigate. A source esports. Uh, I'm not sure where that dive was. I very much dislike that from Fridge. This team actually won the four versus five. Keep pushing top lane and take the tower. Dragon's not going to be spawning for a bit. It's just a free turret, but he didn't want to take it. No, I mean, the waves get shoved in, but that's about it. <sighs> Could have been more, but well played by the side of ESG nonetheless. Definitely, and uh, highlighting Ignorance performance this game, doing a lot better on the Sejuani. Yeah, I was a little yes. worried when I saw it. Mind you, down 50 CS to the Warwick, but still a lot better from the first game. Weed between Jinx and Caitlyn is still quite big, about 900 gold. But it's starting to close up a little. Jungler's extremely close in gold, though. All that farm on Warwick is helping him a ton. Absolutely ah, the case. Double Bramble Vest again. Sejuani and Orn both pick it up. It's gonna make a pretty tanky fridge. Now sitting a uh, pretty good amount of armor. 157 for himself. It's only gonna get worse and worse for Frost Esports as the game moves onwards. And it looks like with neither team and a definitive gold advantage over the other, we'll be sitting in this one for a little bit longer than 20 minutes. Yes. Drunk Warwick actually hasn't completed his uh, jungler item, actually. He went straight for the team, or Titanic Hydra. I've seen people do that before, and I, I actually kind of like it. Hmm. Yeah. It's not a bad option to put it one way. Either way, though, first esports, they are rolling uh, down the middle lane, but how quickly are they able to do it? Because that's some... Fridge Pretty good wave player. moving up. Gonna meet the Aurelia in the jungle, actually. Uh, mm. Nothing comes out of it. No, Aurelia either. having the full Trinity Force, she should actually hurt quite a bit. Ah, Fridge with the Ninja Tabby Bramble Vest, my favorite. Yes, yes, that is Ooh. a very tanky Fridge. A Rampage actually, Koala just diving in deep. The three-man Oriole! Three-man Orion ultimate to come through. Ace in the hole, a little but close the, on oh! that one. But call the Forge God runs through the entire team. One kill gets picked up. Death Rocket to come through. Very low. Caitlyn firing in the back line, but the Warhood is right on top of him. Ignorant is about to meet his first death of the game. Zap picks it up. The shutdown oh. kill to come through. And while it was looking the greatest for ESG, it suddenly falls apart. A two for four on the side of Frosty. The call of the Forge God misses. If that ulti lands, it's so game-changing. Oh. 
that's that's just unfortunate for the side of ESG. They take the mid turret, and now Jinx is even bigger. And great Oriana ult from, from Navigate there, really. Yeah, I, I was I was about to ask how uh, do you force the siege because they were ESG were doing good. They were clearing the waves uh, with just the Zillion, Vladimir, and Caitlyn very very quickly, and first you couldn't respond. And then suddenly you see go for a jungle team fight and everything falls oh. apart. And another Cloud Drake, even more movement speed on top of the Warwick, on top of the Trundle, the Aurelia? Dead uh. insult to injury. And actually, whoa, they're getting in the jackpot this game. That is a third yeah, Cloud Yeah, third one going to spawn up. in six minutes. Trundle going with the Iceborne. I like it. Oh, wait a second. Wait, ESG do Baron, ESG do Baron, ESG do Baron. This is a really good call. They're gonna lose a lot for it, but they wouldn't matter if they go bot lane. They cannot defend that. They're gonna. It lose doesn't that matter. They give up way. Baron. This, this is a really good call from ESG. Very proactive. Very bad call from Fossey. We see the Jigsaw coming out. Could it be a steal? Oh, Super Mega Death Rock could have come through. Can he steal it? No, he no. can't because the camera does not care about that <laughs> at all. Death side a little too close. I think he might be going down. How this long does it take to do Baron? There's the Chrono Shift. It takes them a while, apparently, when you're down 5k. Warhood picks up the kill. Another base is in shambles for ESG. Was the Baron worth that? I, I don't think so. It took them so long to do this Baron. They needed Zillion to be with them, the extra DPS. Just lose it. Instead, Zillion loses his life, and they lose an inhib. But we There's might have the call, fight. The Forge God, the Glacial Prison, does miss. It's just a flash away on the side of Navigate. And I think Frosty might be here to stay. <sighs> now ESG, all they have to do, let, let Caitlyn clear waves, let Vlad get his farm. You farm up a little bit, you have Varen. Oh, Vlad, ca ooh, the Oriole oh, whiffs. What? Oh, Sombrero uh, is the only thing that hits right there, and uh, Navigate, along with the rest of Frost Esports, they may not have the Baron, but they can definitely get out. Blue stolen from ESG by the side of Frosty, ah. Once Caitlyn hits her first zeal item, she will probably be able to fight. But you have to be careful of that Jinx. She is so strong right now. Ooh, Sivian. Yeah, Sivian. Oh, no. Sivian. I don't know if you can get out this one, buddy. He's Pops going in. Actually. He's going in, actually. Looks to get the kill on a navigate, and he does have it. Death Rocket's going to go wide. The Zillion ult. Stun to come through. It will be Death Scythe. That goes down the fight. However, a few shots from Caitlyn would do it. Warhood gets taken out. Now a Rampage and Koala finds himself on the wrong side of the lane. That was Frosty. Ignorant picks up the kill. That was Frosty overstaying. And now you have a Caitlyn, Vlad, Orn, Sejuani, Baron push. Now they do, and EST are going to be able to pick up some turrets for themselves. Equalize this 6-2 to two to a very likely 6-4 to four as they continue to push onwards. Only the bottom lane defending the middle lane, but that's Baron Nasher ESG Genesis. This is just what ESG needed. It is. It looks like they are going to back away from the push. They don't want to overstay their welcome uh, with the lead that they have. ESG might be getting caught out here by Shy Quinn. The pillar does land. Not going to do much. No, not going to do much. Arctic Salt doesn't get slowed. Uh, nor does the blast go, and uh, it was a good fight for ESG Genesis. CP from the Aurelia bot side is gonna run into Sejuani. Uh oh, how tanky are you, Sejuani? Tanky enough, all right. <laughs> if anything, Aurelia could have cued the wolf there, kill it, then cue on to Sej for free gold. <laughs> uh. Frosty is sieging mid lane. They are gonna get the turret. Yeah, they are actually. There's zero contest from ESG. Genesis, it's just gonna be the bomb that lands on top of him. Fridge issues the call of the Forge God. It doesn't do anything as both teams scramble a little bit. Now, ESG Genesis, if they can repel this fight, they stay in the game. If they don't, Caitlin they might low. just lose it. Caitlyn gets a little too close, but it might have just baited in Koala. They pick up the kill. Chrono Shift on towards the Caitlyn. Frost doing good damage in the back line, but there is Sivian gets the kill. Shy Quinn goes down the front line. That will be three kills for ESG. Looking for the fourth one on a navigate. The flail stun lands, and the fourth kill of the fight finally goes over. Oh. Oh, I don't like what Caitlyn's doing here. She's going bot to clear the wave. She should just be pushing mid with her team. They still have a little bit of Baron left. It's going to run out, but 
the Caitlyn push is so strong. I don't know why she's there to clear a few minions that Orn could have cleared. I don't like that. I don't like it either, but what I also don't like uh -oh, is Uh-oh, that... I don't like ESG overstaying here now. Uh-oh. There's no Caitlyn. Uh, I... They got some good damage on the turret, but they really are pushing their luck with this one. Arctic Assault away from uh, Ignorance. The Shirelia's Reverie from the Zillion here actually giving them a decent speed boost, but is it enough to outrun the Warwick? The Flash uh, coming from the Trundle! There's the Flash. He's not going to find anything, though. It's four members of ESG Genesis looking for the play. Frost almost has the Super Mega Death Rocket up. It's about to come in a second. He's oh, here go it goes! Long range shot right down Ooh. the lane. There it is! But it's not enough damage to pick up the kill! Yow! Oh, Fridge, though. Fridge forced to use his flash defensively uh, as he rams into the pillar. Ah, uh, we're taking the turret here. Yeah, the rest of Frost are gonna rotate over and make that turret score 7 8 all too easily. Uh, we've seen the SG, they're looking better in these fights, but. How much is that lucky spree about to go? <sighs> Caitlyn's macro here is just off. If she's been with her, t if she was with her team in a lot of this, they, they would have gotten so much more. Caitlyn finally picking up her first zeal item. Twenty-six minutes Ugh. into the match. Yeah. Jinx already getting the last whisper. This is much better if she oh, goes into boy. if she goes into her next zeal item here. She's gonna be huge. Another I air drink for the side of Frosty. I don't know if they should contest this. They're not no, going to. No, they have uh, to give it up. And then an earth have, drake spawning. That is, ooh, that is all too easy, all too lucky for first esports. The third cloud dragon to come through. They are so fast right now. Whew. Good luck outrunning the Warwick now. <laughs> and you're not outrunning it. That's a joke. <laughs> there is no outrunning that. It's a base movement speed right now. Okay, that's 414. Pop all the other movement Pop speed w. that you have. Oh boy. Ugh. Blue putting up, getting picked up by Navigate here. Frosty's probably gonna siege bot lane as a five man. Jinx picking up the red buff. ESG's red buff's gonna be spawning soon. Hopefully Caitlyn picks that up. I don't think she's gonna go for it. Trundle all alone in the topside jungle at ESG. No vision in ESG's topside jungle though. It's all from Frosty. Yeah, so they have to be very careful. Trundle, Even sieging up that far. Trundle doing the red dangerous. buff. He's asking to it, steal too. it. Yeah, he's got it. <laughs> and he's gonna walk out too. Wow. ESG wonder where it went. Very little vision on the side of ESG here. They're just running in the dark. Now, Baron Asher number two is up for ESG. If they can manage to get it... Ignorance it's actually a higher level than Warhood here. We might be able to see a Miracle Steal. Both top laners to. are bot side. Aurelius TP is coming up. Fridge has his, the Serpent slithers through, ESG are gonna try and wait over the pit to see if Frosty can do it. Jinx taking a little bit of damage from the Baron. Aurelia mid, Fridge oh, still pushing no. by. Shy Quinn, my is very close to a pick. Glacial Prison gets tossed out, that's a huge ultimate yeah. now down. Quite bad. Jinx actually picking up the Mortal Reminder third. It's not as bad as Mortal Reminder second. Sometimes if you need the armor pen, which this game you might need, you'd probably want to go for that third. Yeah, and I think if you're Frosty, you recognize that Caitlyn's being way pushed back by the support. You yes. just go for the Baron. Yeah, I think so. And Fridge has to respond to this Aurelia bot lane. Oh, Shy Quinn can actually oh, 1v1 no. the ADC. Shy Quinn could just actually, he's not even 1v1, he's styling on him right now. Forces usage uh, of defensive abilities from ESG and almost picks up a solo kill onto the AD Thara. Oh, Fridge taking some damage. He's fine. Jinx solo taking the Baron. There, this is it. There we go. There oh, is... Oh, ignorance coming, though. Yes, Gia. Gotta roll over right now. Uh, 
Otherwise, that Baron Asher, which is taken very low, now below 5,000, below 4,000. Frosty needs a hero. Ignorance gonna have to go in. Frosty, they can hold. They Ooh, can go. he was canceled. Done to come through. Fridge is in the pit, and the Baron Asher is secured by Frosty Esports. But the fight right afterwards. Stasis popped by Sivian, but it's not gonna do anything. Frost fires off in the back line. There's the zap. Koala taking a little low on this one. ESG, they have their ultimates back up, but can they look for any more? Should they look for any more? No, they shouldn't. They have to back off. A one for none and the Baron. Frosty's in a pretty good spot now. They Yikes. are in a pretty good spot. However, ESG staying as proactive as they can. Uh, that might not be a good idea. Try to get the middle turret, but that's not a good idea. Warwick running them down. Ulti isn't up, though. The the pillar from Shy Quinn was so good there. It canceled the Sejuani Q, and she couldn't get into the pit to contest the Baron. No, she couldn't. Shy Quinn... Uh... Just like the BMG series being the hero that his team needs in some of these cases. Uh, as ESG, uh, they're down in gold by 3,000. It's pretty bad, but it's not the end. Or is yes. it? I think this game is nearly impossible for ESG to win now. Oh, okay. we'll see, though. We'll see. Call the Forge God lands Big onto the wasted. James Wolf. Shots to come through, but it's not going to matter. Uh, now, Shy Quinn... Uh, Handling Frosty Esports pretty well on this one. Uh, he has two members of ESG to come towards him. Frosty rotating towards the top side. Gonna pick up the turret. Oh, Zillion yes. Zillian ulti down. Jinx is low, though. Oh, Forced to use it on himself with the, the Chrono Chef. Gets out of it right afterwards, but that means that if anyone else goes down, there's no way to save them. The shutdown picked up by Koala. Oh, the and Zillion Bomb! Right Zillion Bomb looks good, but how much is it gonna matter? Ignorant and Shy could have been going at it for a while, but the rest of the base That's and the be members of ESG are in shambles. A double kill coming in for Frost. One trick mid will be able to pick up a return kill, but that's not going to matter at all. Frosty Esports looking onto the Nexus turrets that can't pick up the first one just yet. I think the first one's gonna go down. Ooh, Aurelia going down, though. There it is. That's another kill for ESG. A little sloppy out of Frosty. But they know where the found dive's gone before they're not gonna go for it again. The second Nexus turret now under focus. Sivian up in a second right here. ESG are hanging on by a thread. The season of ESG could end in any minute. Wow. It could. And... I thought it was going to be over there. It wasn't. They barely hold on. The Earth Drake going down to the side of Frost here. Caitlyn finally getting her double zeal items. Building a fourth? What's that Brawler's Glove going into? I don't know if it's going to go into anything. And I hope it's not triple attack speed. Um, but I don't think it matters at this point. Because Probably. playing uh, down three inhibitors uh, is incredibly difficult. I think Caitlyn really needs to pick up Lord Dominic's regard here. But she's just not going to do damage to the Aurelia and Warwick. She doesn't need the Grievous students this game because Vladimir actually went and bought the Morello. So he's a good reliable source for that. And Orin and Sag both have Grievous students for the auto attackers. If Vlad can't dive on to the, uh, you know, Jinx. Yeah, I mean, Fred is pretty tanky at this stage of the game. Picking himself up a pretty solid 288 The double armor, bomb, the Warwick ult! There's the double bomb. Warwick ult, Call of the Forge God, will go through Frosty Esports. But how much does it matter? Frosty Esports just need to focus the turret. Where is it? There it is. The fight still going in favor of ESG. Fridge the barely turret alive. Does go down. ESG in a scramble as Navigate and Shy Quinn and Frost pick up the last few and that's kills. That's going to be the game. Not matter at all. Frosty Esports, uh, your fourth seed entering into the playoffs as they nail the hammer and onto ESG. Whew! What a game. God. What a game. It, ten minutes longer than the last one. ESG, uh, they put up their, their last game of the season. Uh, 
going over to Frosty Sports 2-0. Look at those damage charts. The Jinx just ugh, destroying. The Zillion actually doing the most damage on the side of ESG. Yikers. Jeez. 18k on Zillion. <laughs> Zillion was practically the mid laner for both teams. Wow. Trundle doing a quite a respectable amount of damage, actually. And we saw what Chai Quinn was able to do this game uh, right on top of the Caitlyn as well in that little situation and barely got scathed by it. Wow. Who would you give MVP to if you were to give it to someone? If I were to give it to someone... Now, first esports, really all of them played good. And I'd say it'd be a toss-up between uh, Frost, because he played very good in both games, uh, and Warhood for being... Uh, the magical e-sub that Frost Esports were definitely gambling a little bit with, but played very well uh, in both games. Yeah, I, I'd probably say Shy Quinn or Warhood, personally. I, I, that, that pillar from Shy Quinn was super clean. Like, Baron was such a risk if he didn't land that pillar, but he did, which in turn allowed them to end the game. Very well played, though, from both teams. Mm. So if we had to uh, split it up, it looks like both of us are saying Warhood. Yes. Alright, and I don't believe we have any games whatsoever after this at all, so... Yeah, that's it, you know what that everyone? Means? Well, no, that's not it, because I oh. believe, because we have no more games after this, we can have a potential interview. Oh. Now, who did we say we were going in for the MVP? I guess Warhood. Should I move him in here? Uh, well, let's see. Definitely, I definitely think it's worth it seeing that we don't have any time constraints uh, whatsoever to come through or hood congratulations you have won mvp of standout player as army would put it of the series let's get you in here oh wait uh okay hey what's up dota no oh, wait what <laughs> <laughs> i, wait, I don't trolling. know what's going on you got All mvp right. no. doing, you got mvp congrats one MVP of the series, standout player, which means you get to have an interview where we ask you a couple of questions. You start us off, Spider Queen. Um, so, what's what you like the word pick? You picked it twice in a row. So, actually, what happened there was so, first off, thank you so much for Frosty Sports letting me play, and thanks to ESG for you know being my first competitive match. It was two great matches. Um, the Warwick pick actually was our backup pick. Uh, I'm just recently switched to jungle as my main role in solo queue. I am a support player. So uh, when they took Sejuani both games, it, it made me fall back onto Warwick. Ah, I see, I see. Mm. And speaking of Sejuani, do you like that matchup? Um, well, the matchup, the truth is, right, looking at what the how it went out, the matchup, uh, I win that matchup very early from what I've seen and what I've experienced on both sides of that. Uh, if the Sejuani doesn't take press the attack and three clear, I get basically full uh, jungle pressure on him level level three through levels. Basically, from level three to level nine, I can basically do whatever I want in that jungle uh, hmm. without much pressure or response. Is what I found. I see. I see. You have any hmm. questions, please? Yes, I do. Actually, uh, coming in. Basically, last second, the ESA prefers to esports. Um, what was your mentality playing against ESG here? Um, so my mentality was I've never actually seen them play, so I didn't know what to expect. So my whole thing was, you know, get uh, get the carry lanes ahead that I felt were to be able to carry when uh, we loaded into champs uh, champ loading screen and after pick man. Uh, just look look at the lanes, pick out the lanes that I felt like would be gankable at what points, and you know, gank there, get them ahead, and then just let them carry me through the rest of it. Which uh, you know, shout out to Koala, shout out to Nova Frost, who did both very good jobs at their respective power spikes in the games, both games. All right, some great stuff coming in. Uh... On this Warwick pickup, I believe, don't quote me on it, but I believe uh, the rosters are locked in for playoffs. Uh, but nonetheless, great, stellar performance coming in your first set of games. Uh, will we be able to see you in Season 3 of the BSGCS? Um, I mean, I don't know what Frost is planning to do. Uh, I, like, I, like you said, it was a last-minute pickup thing, so I'm technically a free agent uh, for both support and or uh, jungle. 
Mostly support is what I do in competitive. Well, there you guys go. If you want a good support, check out Warhood. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. All right, the door's <laughs> on the right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and with that, that is our streaming night. Anything you want to say, Blaze? Um, very fun casting with you, as per usual, Spider Queen. And, yep, I think that's where we do our echolog. I was Blaze, your play-by-play -play caster, joining me. The Spider Queen. <laughs> Adios, everyone.